let's discuss the absolute best remedy for candida. I'm also going to talk about how to prevent candida, but I first want to help you understand what candida really is. And there's some information that a lot of people just don't realize in your gut. You know, we always talk about the microbiome, right? All the friendly bacteria. Well, a good portion of the microbes in your gut are fungi and candida is one type of fungus. And collectively, all the different types of funguses are called the mycobiome, M-Y-C-O, and that is the family of friendly fungi. And just so you know, the great majority of these uh, fungi are not unfriendly. They work together with the bacteria to help you in many different ways uh, for the immune system, for digestion, for other nutrients to be absorbed. It's not until we alter this bacteria, the microbiome, that we get a problem with the fungus, okay? Because it changes the environment. And I'm specifically talking about an antibiotic. One of the biggest side effects from taking antibiotics is an overgrowth of candida or other types of yeast, or even mold. Now, this is interesting because in the soil, you also have fungi and bacteria. And having this optimum ratio really supports plant growth. If you have a ratio that is not correct, you're gonna have a difficult time growing vegetables. It may be good for weeds, but not other plants. So in our bodies, bacteria releases certain chemicals and things that keep this fungus friendly and prevent it from turning unfriendly and becoming pathogenic. And so if the environment changes, uh, this fungus starts to change its relationship with us. Uh, no longer is it helping us, now it's going to hurt us. And so there's five main category of things that this bacteria release uh, to help keep the fungus and the candida in check. They make small chain fatty acids, okay? One of them is called butyrate. And these fatty acids come as a byproduct of you consuming like vegetable fiber, okay? From the fiber, it changes into these fatty acids. And then the colon uses them for energy. They're good for regulating your blood sugars, but they're also really good as an antifungal. And then also these bacteria make medium chain triglycerides. You probably heard of like MCT oil, and that actually can help someone generate ketones, right? Well, medium chain triglycerides also are a byproduct of your own bacteria. In fact, they can even act as an antibacterial. They kind of keep everything being friendly, okay? And they prevent um, an overgrowth of the pathogens. MCT oil, that's pretty interesting. And one unique thing about this candida or an overgrowth of any fungus is that it prefers in more alkaline environment, okay? Because one of the byproducts of this fungus or this candida is it releases ammonia, okay? Ammonia is extremely alkaline. On the pH scale, it's like 11, which is super, super alkaline. And normally the gut pH should be about five, uh, 5.5. And so understanding the pH is very, very important into having this balance of the good guys and the bad guys. But as soon as you get a candida infection or like a yeast infection, or you get this, like the white tongue, or it can grow in your private parts and this type of thing, you'll notice that the person's breath smells a bit like ammonia. That is coming from the candida. And that also tells us what the pH is of their large intestine, which should be slightly acidic and now it's too alkaline. And so it's kind of a breeding ground for more candida. Now, another thing that the bacteria produce to keep this fungus in check is bile salts. So bile salts are another inhibitory uh, factor uh, for this fungus, but not tutka, which is uh, another bile salt that I've mentioned. Uh, that's not the one that you need. You wanna take a regular bile salt and you wanna wanna take that on an empty stomach. And the bacteria make other things that keep this fungus in check, like antimicrobial peptides, and there's several others. When we take an antibiotic, we wipe out the bacteria, and now the fungus has free reign to start to do whatever they want. And they take advantage of the situation and they overgrowth. And the normal candida then start developing filaments and mold-like projections and become the pathogenic version 
of this candida, simply because we no longer have the controlling of buffering factors from the bacteria. And so we talk about dysbiosis, which is an alteration in the diversity and the type of microbes for bacteria. You also have dysbiosis of the fungus as well. So you can have a big problem. And now they develop as a side effect, unfriendly bacteria, not to mention resistance to the fungicide, uh, but other problems too. And so it's really a circular thing. One thing creates another problem and creates another problem and you're trying to treat it around and around. And that's why I want to give you the big picture so you can understand it and not get stuck in the treating of symptoms. And when someone takes an antibiotic, make sure you at the same time take a probiotic. And that way you can kind of um, at least minimize the damage because it's going to take like about at least 40 days for you to reestablish these microbes. And sometimes people are on antibiotics a lot longer, get to a point where it's, it's going to be really hard to reestablish the normal flora that you once had. And when you have this unfriendly candida, you greatly increase inflammation in your gut. Okay. So we have this, the pH changes, you get uh, inflammation in the gut, you get ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel syndrome. It increases your risk for a lot of additional problems in your gut, not to mention the bloating, the craving for sugar, which I'm going to get to, the itchiness in the private parts, the white tongue, the fatigue, all sorts of things. Also, I found um, an interesting uh, research paper on colorectal cancer. There's a high incidence of having dysbiosis with the microbiome, the family of funguses that can probably set you up for risk of getting colon cancer. I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense because both the friendly fungus and the friendly bacteria help you with your immune system. I mean, and I'm talking in a major way. Some reports state that up to 80% of your immune system is these other entities that are growing in our digestive system. Now let's talk about how to get rid of candida, okay? Of course, the best way is to prevent it. And you can use what I'm gonna tell you to prevent. But if you have candida, here's some things that will be very effective, okay? The first thing is to take a probiotic, okay? A good probiotic to put back in the flora to then keep this candida in check. That's the most important thing. And you need to start on something immediately. But one of the things that feeds candida is sugar. And milk sugar is definitely a sugar. So let's talk about dairy, right? Can you do like yogurt or kefir? Well, it does have some lactose. Unless you can find some kefir without lactose, I would stay away from dairy at this point, okay? Instead, you want to do probably some good probiotic, but also probiotic foods as in sauerkraut, kimchi, pickles, uh, fermented vegetables, those types of things. And, and also those things are very acidic and it's going to change the pH, making the environment very unfriendly for this pathogenic candida. The other point about sugar is that candida cannot exist without glucose and other sugars. So what does that mean? It means that if you starve this candida off by going on keto, low carb, no sugars, it's going to go away. Glucose is the worst sugar, uh, but a lot of... Uh, carbs turn into glucose. So we just want to avoid carbohydrates unless they're vegetable carbohydrates. There's also other types of sugars, like in sugar alcohols. If you're on keto, you know about sugar alcohols like uh, xylitol. Um, there's also sorbitol, which I don't recommend that, or mannitol. Well, apparently those can also feed candida, not to the same extent as glucose, but by 100%, which is like one-tenth of a thousand, but still so I would avoid sugar alcohols if you're trying to get rid of candida. Now, the fact that you're reducing your sugars, okay, down to zero and your carbs way down, this means that your body's going to go into a state of ketosis and certain ketones are in the family of butyric acid. So that can help suppress this fungal infection. In fact, ketones are acidic. So now we're going to change the pH back to where we need it. And that can help as well. That's why the ketogenic diet is so important. And capric acid in coconut oil and in MCT oil can be very beneficial as an antifungal. So that's something else you could include in the diet. As far as other things that can help you, vegetable fiber. So you can have like salads and vegetables. It's going to be totally fine. Have your protein, 
um, but don't get into the sugar alcohols or the other carbs or even fruit. And also you can add like natural herbal antibiotics. Okay. That's the icing on the cake. You can add like garlic, oregano oil, thyme, sage, the turmeric, for example, is another one. All right. So now I think you have enough information to turn things around really fast. But since we're on the topic of antibiotics and natural antibiotics, if you haven't seen this video, check it out. I put it up right here.